My name is Matt from Mobile West Canning. We uh, partner with our craft breweries, craft meateries, cideries, coffee uh, production places to get their product in cans. So today we're going to focus on canning 101. We're going to sort of go through the process, take you where uh, uh, we have to go and, and what we have to do to get everybody's product into cans and on the, on the grocery store shelves for you. This is a mobile canning line. So we actually have a box truck that brings the canning line here to the facility. We unload it off of that box truck and we roll it into the facility. We set up the canning line with the twist rinse and the depalletizer all in a space. And then we run what's called a clean in place, CIP. We make sure that we follow all sorts of cleaning protocols to keep your product clean and safe when it's in the package. We start over here. The cans are stacked up on a pallet, just like you would expect any other product to be on a pallet. So they have to come off the pallet so that we can uh, put the, the liquid in them. And so the first thing we do is we depalletize them. So we're sweeping them off of the, the pallet onto the depalletizer. As you can see, they run from the depalletizer. They get narrowed down to a single file. They go through what we call a twist rinse. So as the cans traverse the twist rinse, it's called the twist rinse because it turns the can upside down, it sprays it with sanitizer. We mix the sanitizers in these corny kegs so that we can be a, a, a self-unit, self-sufficient unit when we come to all of our different partners and uh, bring our own sanitizer to sanitize the cans to make sure that they're purged of anything that, that may have gotten into them in, in transportation or anything else. Then it turns them back right side up again and it lands it on the canning line to get ready for the fill. If you look all over here also, there's a little printer. So what we're putting on there is we're printing the packaging date on the bottom of the can so you know how fresh your product is. Um, the alcohol industry doesn't care as much about that production date as say the FDA. The FDA, you, you, if, you, if you ever pick up any food item in your grocery store, you'll see it has a date on it, a date code. So this is required for any non-alcoholic beverage we do, like coffee, tea, or uh, other beverages like that, sodas, um, things like that. But uh, uh, we, we like to put it on every can so that everybody knows what they're getting and when it went in that package. So as far as like an automation process, we, our, our depalletizer, we call it semi-automated because we actually do sweep the cans on the, the, the uh, depalletizer with a sweep arm, uh, you know, human interaction. And then we try to make the rest of the process more automated. But as it comes through, you know, things happen in the twist rinse, things happen with the printer, and you have to have a human interaction to keep the, the process going. Because it's one of those things, you, you think about it, the, the, the rabbit and the hare, if you can keep a, a, a nice, consistent flow, it'll make, It'll, it'll make the day go better, one. It'll also, you know, you'll, you'll get the product into your cans faster and, and be ready to, to get it onto store shelves. There's four little straws here that what they do is they pre-purge the cans with CO2 so that it, wow, and stuff falls off the canning line and you have to pick it up. So uh, it pre-purges the cans so it gets rid of the oxygen out of the cans because oxygen is bad for most products, especially beer and alcohol products. You want to purge as much oxygen as possible. Then the next station is actually the fill station. You can see it, that's where it fills the can with the liquid product. So the product has been mixed in, and uh, carbonated inside a tank. This is a particular tank, it's a uni tank. They also use bright tanks, uh, different styles of tanks that you can use to, to get the product ready to be put into a package. Here we have the, the butterfly valves that, that connect to the bottom of the tank. It runs through a product hose. You can see the product hose comes around and across and it enters the canning line here in this manifold. This manifold also has a temperature gauge. The colder the product, the, better, the easier it is to put in a can. Right now we're sitting at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero centigrade. So the product comes into the manifold, gets dispersed into the four fill heads through these fill tubes. These restrictors control how fast the product can flow into the cans. It goes through the fill heads and drops into the can and slowly fills the can. After the can is full, it sends it down underneath the lid dropper. The lid dropper will drop lids onto the tops of the cans 
and after that you'll see a lid skate that'll hold that top on until it gets to the the uh, the, the primary source of noise which is the the seamer the can gets pushed into the seamer you see it get lifted up it's getting lifted onto a chuck which is just like a drill only a really high power drill it's lifted up onto the chuck and it starts spinning as it's spinning there's two operations that happen operation one will come in and it'll curl the lid around the body of the can. Then the second operation will come in and smush that seam together so you get a perfect hermetic seal of that can. Then as, afterwards, of course, the, the product gets on the outside of the can, it gets spun around, so we rinse and dry the can as it comes out onto the pack out table. So in recent years, people have found out that cans ha are actually a better vessel for your beer, cider, mead products because it keeps the product fresher. In other words, the can is hermetically sealed by the seamer, so no oxygen can get in to, to ruin the beer, no light can get in to convert into alpha acids or anything else. So it's a, a hermetically sealed uh, container that will keep the product fresher longer and increase your shelf life. And then after it comes out, our, our partners in, in, uh, in crime, <laughs> our, our customers then, will uh, put the, the product inside uh, uh, packaging materials that we supply as well. So uh, packaging materials are case trays and then the pack tech. So they'll put the pack tech on top of it. And so that it's a can carrier. So you can put in a four pack, six pack, or even in the bigger uh, varieties, you can get two packs and stuff. Cans are also a, a, a great way to package product and ship because the, the, the aluminum is much lighter than glass. It's also infinitely recyclable. In other words, uh, I want to say it's 68% of all aluminum is recycled aluminum. So it can be infinitely recycled and turned into new packaging over and over. So it's a much more sustainable packaging product or a packaging uh, vessel. So other benefits uh, for cans are they're, they're a perfect cylinder. So they stack on top of each other a lot better. The retail stores like them better because it's a very thick space that they have. So these cans fit perfectly inside those spaces and they can stack them up, get more product to more people, sell more product. So everybody's uh, working off better there. So in canning, there's different size and formats of cans. We have the ability to do these standard 16 ounce cans. There's also the 12 ounce can that comes up to about here, which you're used to in, uh, in your normal beer. In, on the shelf in the grocery store. We also do the sleek cans, which are a little the more slender. They don't have the shoulder here. It's straight down, but it has the same end. Those are your white claw, your, your seltzer cans. Uh, then we also do a, a 10 ounce sleek can. And if you're familiar with coffee product, a lot of your coffee product, since it's a caffeinated based product, they, they put it in a 10 ounce sleek can so that it's, it's, it's uh, more of a, of a serving size for coffee. Because traditionally coffee is a cup, right? Eight ounces. So we put it in a 10 ounce sleet can. So yeah, to handle the different diameter size cans, we actually created our own uh, manifold to hold the fill heads for the canning line. As you can see here, it's the Mobile West Canning Standard and Sleet Canning Kit. So we can change over, you know, you have to change tooling for the different canning sizes and heights. We can change over from standard to sleeks in about five minutes. And so it's really not a really hard deal for us to change formats to our different size cans that we can handle. We actually manufacture cans for several of our customers and partners. Um, this is a, a shrink sleeve can. So we have a, a facility in San Diego that uh, we store truckloads and truckloads of cans in. And when uh, uh, Superstition, who's a little short on space, needs cans, we can manufacture them at that time and ship them just in time shipping so they don't have to spend a lot of space storing cans. So what we do is, is uh, it's, it's, it's another how you do it, is the can comes off of a depalletizer, a lot like this one, only a little bit taller. It goes through a sleever, the sleeve gets uh, thrown down on it, it goes through a heat tunnel, it shrinks onto it, and then it gets repalletized onto these pallets here you, that you see. Our partners will do their own artwork because it's their brand, we want them to create their brand and it, this gives it a really strong brand identity. So they create the artwork, we have it printed onto a sleeve and then we shrink sleeve it onto the can. And if you can see here, I'll probably cut myself here, hopefully not. Underneath this sleeve is just a simple 16 ounce bright can. 
So our, our sleever also can do 12 ounce, 16 ounce standard cans, 10 ounce, 12 ounce sleep cans. And uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we uh, do uh, sleep cans for uh, all sorts of different uh, industries all around the entire Southwest US. We do wine, we do beer, we do coffee, tea, CBD, THC, all kinds of great beverages that you then can enjoy.